Welcome back to the garage, everybody. Gonna be starting a new project, um, at least for the next little bit, which is some axle stuff. And uh, that's gonna be these big old honking Ultimate Dana 60 axles for uh, the plain Jane Jeep, uh, my new Jeep JKU. Um, yeah, I set out with that project with the intention of going directly from stock to a 40 inch tire uh, without any in between. So I knew going into that project that I wanted to have a bigger axle um, and maybe bigger isn't totally correct um, I knew I wanted different than stock axles um, I had two ideas basically one was to do a more traditional if you will uh, you know one ton style axle swap and the other was to do a portal axle I looked at both of those pretty seriously um, and I do think there is a lot of um, benefits pluses minuses uh, to go either direction. Um, but, uh, I, when I looked into going portals seriously, um, I could not find anything in the market that made me happy enough, to, um, that was available enough to spend that kind of money. I did not want to have to design my own portals. Um, I didn't want a portal that, that bolted onto the stock knuckle. So that limited um, or rather the stock outer knuckle, um, limited my choices a little bit. I believe the only company doing a, uh, front portal, um, that replaces the outer knuckle is 74 weld. Um, they at this time, as far as I know, are not, and this isn't a dig on them or anything. Um, they are a very, very busy company. They are growing. They support a ton of platforms. Um, all their stuff is very, very nice and high quality. Everything I've seen um, is very good, but they did not ha have the support available for the JK um, in the way I wanted to do it. Um, and so that plan didn't seem feasible. Um, and so I decided um, after going back and forth a couple times um, to pursue the one ton route um, and even that was, you know, there's a ton of different good companies out there. Um, you know, there's Dynatrack and Curry and, um, you know, the Dana Spicer making their own stuff now. Um, uh, tons of, tons of options. And sometimes it's a bit intimidating to, to go through. And, um, I tend to overanalyze a lot of that stuff. And so, um, where I ended up heading for a couple of reasons I'll get into later a little bit is, um, I ended up looking at the, uh, ultimate Dana 60 package the most. Um, I just so happened to, when I was very close to pulling the trigger, um, it was probably, you know, uh, whatever, you know, happenstance, um, I don't know what, but fortunate maybe, um, that, uh, I'd been talking with a friend about it, uh, this, that, and the other thing. And he sent me a, uh, random posting for a set of brand new in the crate, um, Jeep JKU, uh, ultimate Dana 60 axles, front and rear matching pair. Um, they were new, uh, in the crate, but in the used market. So I was able to pick these up, um, for, significantly less than they would have cost new, which was a big bonus. Um, and then the other big thing that was nice was no wait time. So a lot of the axle manufacturers, I don't know if it's because COVID or just the market changing or whatever. And I understand it. Um, you know, um, keeping a whole bunch of axles on the shelf isn't, isn't really, you know, possible. And so maybe they're building to order or something like that, but the lead times were pretty darn long when I was looking like it was, you know, kind of in that like six, eight week, you know, even longer range. Um, I think like 90 days wasn't uncommon. And I, for me, it helps to be able to keep these projects rolling. And so being able to get them, um, you know, ended up making a weekend out of it, drove down to, uh, where they were at near the, um, in California near the Mexico border, uh, got stopped by Glamis Sand Dunes, 
um, you know, just made a long weekend out of it, went down and fetched them um, with the pickup. So uh, I had my axles in two days and they were pretty much exactly um, what I was going to order. E-locker version, um, the, uh, the JK version, yeah, everything still in the crate. The crates didn't survive. Uh, they had been sitting in a pretty, uh, pretty dry desert, uh, storage shed. And so when we took them out of the crates, the crates just disintegrated. And so we ended up loading them in the back of the truck, um, just without the crates. And that, to be honest, was enough work. Um, these axles, um, I really don't work with heavy duty one ton stuff that much. Like I am an early Jeep guy. And so, um, you know, I like flat fender stuff and even flat fender stuff seems to a little bit heavy sometimes. Um, these are like, seem like they weigh as much as my whole flat fender. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous how heavy they are. Um, you know, that does come with strength hopefully. Um, but it's, you know, all the parts are bigger. Um, and so that is, that was something that was, that was quite shocking, honestly, to me. So just getting like moving these around and getting them out of the truck and that kind of thing, um, by myself. Um, I commonly work by myself. Uh, so doing that was quite the adventure. Um, you know, using an engine hoist and trying to get things moved and up, down, sideways. If couldn't even reach in the back of the truck for enough. But anyways, I got, I got the first one, uh, that I'm going to play with and, uh, on the table eventually. And, and that was, that killed pretty much a whole day or at least enough day that I had energy for. Um, so I'm sure you're asking, well, if they're a bolt and axle for a JK, what are you going to do to them? And so that brings us back to, um, one of the key things that I wanted to do different on this Jeep. And one of the things that I think is one of the places that axle manufacturers could, all of them could do things better. And I'll tie this back into the portals in that if you're going to be buying a complete axle, why not redo the bracketry on the axle to be advantageous for better suspension geometry? Um, with the axle swap. Um, I think, I don't, I don't think very many people, if any, would be swapping these axles into a stock Jeep with little tires. So I think we can assume that pretty much everybody that's swapping like a one ton axle in a Jeep is going to be doing something like a, you know, 38 to 40 inch, 42 inch, whatever is going to be doing a large tire. So there's going to be, um, lift. And so if you're going to have it lifted, especially with the stock suspension, um, or any suspension for that matter, why not take a pass through the suspension brackets on the axle in order to make them, uh, better, make the geometry better for a lift. Um, and, and you're commonly going to have to run, you know, say a two to three inch, maybe a little bit more, um, bump stop spacer uh, to package a 40 inch tire, you know, with a three or a four inch lift, wherever you kind of end up. And so that gives you some space to play around with things. And I don't, I was always kind of surprised that nobody took advantage of that. If you're going to be spending big money on an axle, um, it would be something free or value added that a business, um, could, could add an axle manufacturer could add to to the axle that would, that would not cost them anything more. And I, and I passed this idea through most of the manufacturers that I could get a hold of, or that I know people that work in and, and honestly didn't get any, any, uh, any buy-in on that idea. So that left me with doing it myself. And, and that was honestly one of the reasons why I ended up, um, looking at portals so hard because effectively a portal axle system, um, at least one that, that bolts onto the stock axle housing or a stock based axle housing would effectively do that. So essentially you get to keep all the, um, all the, the control arm angles stock, 
um, which works fairly well, honestly. Um, I think stock suspension works pretty decent. Is it perfect? No, um, but it works pretty decent. And that's a good benchmark kind of to work from. I think a lot of people kind of chase the, you know, big crazy amounts of travel and droop and stuff like that. And they actually lose a little bit of, of some other characteristics like, you know, being able to drive down the highway at 80 miles an hour and things like that. And so I, I kind of tend to take a moderate approach to that. Um, one of the vehicles that really proved that to me um, or proved that concept out to me was my LX45 project, which was essentially a, a custom uh, FJ45-esque body on a, um, a newer 80 series uh, Toyota chassis. And I didn't lift that at all. So it still has stock LX450, uh, which is like the shortest, lightest coil you can possibly get for the 80 series um, and, and no lift in 40 inch tires. And that thing works fantastic. Um, a little bit of shock in it with some, some tuned uh, valve, uh, AccuTune did the valving on them, just some Fox 2.0, um, remote re reservoir shocks bolt in, um, you know, so very, very, very minimal modifications to that chassis, but with a 40 inch tire. So such stock suspension geometry, 40 inch tire. Um, and it works really well. It goes down the road. Well, um, handles well wheels well um it the 40 inch tire gives you all the clearance you need it has a little bit more shock travel um, but generally just is a stock suspension and honestly works very very well and i've taken that thing um ev everywhere i mean it's been to the rubicon multiple times it's been to the deuce Yersham, it's been to moab it's been to farmington it's been to sand hollow all over the place so i think i have a pretty good feeling for it and that worked really well that chassis in general is, is a really good chassis um and suspension uh it gets a bad rap but i think it's it's quite good for what it is and especially if you don't mess with it too much but so i'm taking a similar approach with the with the jku with uh the plain jane jeep and so to do that um portals was one way to do it that was pretty um pretty advantageous that way and like then you'd get not only the suspension modifications but then you get the ground clearance um, I do think there's a limit there because the portals almost give you a little too much lift. Um, you don't get to maybe add an inch of up travel, um, in the mix, um, some things like that. So there's pluses and minuses, but that didn't happen. So what I did was bought big axles and what I'm going to do is redo the suspension geometry, um, on those axles. Um, and that's what I'm going to walk you through right now. So, um, stock. Uh, of how much I'm going to be able to show you this. I got my pointy stick though and my head's cut off. That's never good. Excuse me. Oh, yep. Camera. So, um, upper mount, the lower mount. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is raise the upper mount and raise the lower mount, um, on a JK the lower mount actually tucks underneath the axle tube. So I will have to do a little bit of length adjustment on the, uh, arms. Um, really with how everything worked out in the end, you can't actually do it this way, but as far as geometry goes, I'm basically just flopping the arms top to bottom. So on the, the JK, the top arm is a little shorter than the bottom arm. And so that's about how much change there is. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. I think having the, the suspension links be more horizontal, um, at ride height is going to outweigh any changes that I need to make for the geometry. So how we're going to do that on this axle, I'm starting with the rear. That's a little simpler. Um, and this is probably going to be a couple different parts. Um, I'm hoping to squeeze it into two or three parts, make them a little bit longer, a little bit more tech information, a bit, a little bit more of like making stuff. Um, this is my project, so I don't have to feel bad about filming, even though I still have to make myself film things. Um, I don't like filming things. I like explaining things. I don't mind doing this kind of stuff. Um, but like the, when I'm in the moment trying to make things, it's hard for me to slow down and film things. So I'm working on that. Um, I'm hope you're here for the tech, not just the, the filming because that would be bad. But anyways, um, so how this is going to work is we'll go over and look at the other side and that is like this. 
So there's a couple things going on here. So these are the patterns for the new brackets. Um, I am trying to make this so uh, it is a retrofit, not a replacement. The way the brackets are generally, I think I can do that with um, just a series of, of flat plates. These are all going to be quarter inch steel, just like the stock brackets um, to form this taller upper tower and then this new uh, lower mount. Um, they basically will bolt onto the axle for location and then, um, be welded, uh, once they're in their final home. I don't, I don't think I, I would trust, and I can't do it on all of them, but as far as location goes, I was able to try and use things that were already there, like the stock, um, control arm mounting points. And so those locations will get sleeves. Um, in them full strength, you know, hardware through them, and that'll help tie everything together. Um, and then the new brackets will weld to the old brackets. It's a little bit clunky, but honestly, cutting all the brackets off these for most people, including myself, would be a lot, a lot. Like getting everything in the, in the right spot again um, would be super challenging. So I think doing it this way, at least for, you know, like a prototype or proof of concept, um, you know, if they're flat, I can do that. Um, I could offer a kit on the store if anybody's interested. Um, you know, of course, like drop a comment so I can kind of gauge interest. But in general, um, that is the, the plan. So there's basically just the lower inner bracket here, um, the, the lower middle bracket here, which, which is actually one piece that spans top to bottom. Um, and then in the back here, uh, that forms this, this upper part of the, the upper mount. I did decide to do, let's see if I can get you guys, show you guys this part or you can see it. So if you can see this a little bit better, um, let's see if that shows up. So I, I think it shows up. I hope so. I'm going to do two different mounting points. Um, and so, Hey, so how you doing? Anyways, I'm doing two different mounting points. Um, basically a plus three and a plus four. Um, that is, uh, to give me a few different options for tuning, uh, anti-squad in the back I can, um, and then also in regards to what the final lift would be. So, it gives me options. I'm not saying there's one perfect option. So, or one perfect position for the arm lift, um, balance and things like that. So having a couple options so I can go upper or lower, um, on the bottom and upper and lower on the top also. And I, that gives me a couple different options for, for tuning anti squat. Um, and I think that will be uh, very advantageous to how the JKU handles with lift with the stock, uh, length control arms. Um, you know, the geometry correction brackets, uh, are out on the market. Most everyone I think that I could find always does it on the, um, uh, frame side. And I don't think that's necessarily the only way to do it. Uh, more the best way to do it. So I'm going to try it this way um, and see, see how that works out. Uh, I'm going to do one other thing on the rear axle or I guess one other big thing um, in the general plan is I'm going to design this so that I move the rear axle back about an inch, inch and a half. Uh, I think with a 40 inch tire on the JKU, if you're going to get it low, um, having a little, having the rear axle moved back slightly is going to be better, uh, for packaging. And so that means I have to move a couple other things around. This would be optional in the concept. Uh, this is just something I'm doing. Um, you could do this a different couple different ways, but I figure if I'm here, I'm just going to do it, um, my way anyways. Uh, so one of those things is I will have to, and you can see here. 
don't know if I can get in here in this shot too. So maybe such bad camera work. Not really. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just talking to you guys. Um, so I have to move the track bar back it, pan hard back it. Um, and to do that, I am building this little jig. So uh, if I can show you this on this side, um, this is just a small little jig. It bolted onto two holes that were in the bump stop strike pad. Um, just a quick little uh, uh, round bar jig to a um, bolt that's sized to go through that hole, which I believe was 9 16 um, because I had to go uh, find one that was long enough to do this. Um, so then I turned a spacer here and just uh, basically some tubing that was um, cut off on the bandsaw and then I chucked it up in the lathe um, and then I was able to um, face it off, drill it out and make a inch and a half spacer for that. Um, and so that basically let me um, s have a jig and a spacer so that uh, when this thing is together, um, I, I don't, um, it gives me a reference point. So I will be able to cut this bracket off um, here of the axle. The bolt that is in it right now um, gives me the reference position for this pivot point um, for the track bar using that little jig so that doesn't move. I can cut this off and then remove that inch and a half spacer and then the bracket will move forward um, an inch and a half and be in the new position uh, that would be, I guess, stock relatively <laughs> relative to stock. Um, and then the axle itself will be rearward, rearward 1.5 inches. Um, the other thing on a JKU that this actually works really good for, or I think will help a lot, is this corner on uh, JKUs, especially with these big beefy brackets, um, tends to foul on the shock, which is usually mounted like right here. Um, so this um, gets in the way. So with uh, moving the mount forward, that creates an inch and a half more space between this mount and the shock and the shock moves back slightly, I will leave the lower mount um, on the axle stock. It will just tip the shock up slightly, which on a JKU again, they're kind of lean back. They're kind of inboard weird shocks uh, inside the frame. They're not, it's not the most effective position. So I think getting them upright slightly uh, will help. Um, so yeah, so that is going to be next. There is, um, I can show you guys, I've got that all marked out. Um, basically, if you can see here is the marking for the cutting. There's one on the other side and then on the bottom and I will just trim that to fit. And then here is that uh, jig basically to help line everything up. And then this is that spacer that will come out. So this does give us um, one more problem. So coil mount, um, if you move the axle back that direction, the coil mount needs to move forward this direction. So I will be taking these coil mounts off. Hiya. And building a new coil mount. Um, I went through and marked where the center of the coil mount is. Um, so I will build a coil mount that moves it forward. And then I also have a, um, I also have a idea for um, cheaper, easier um, rear JKU coils, uh, basically just using uh, like a generic Eibach five inch um, standalone coil. Um, but on like on a, 
on a JK, the bottom of the coil is is uh, small, and so it's designed to has a pigtail on it that's designed to fit over this diameter. Um, and then the top or the other side of the coil is is pretty much just open wound or, or with a, a square cut end. I don't think they're, uh, if I remember right, I don't think they have a, a flat cut coil. I think it indexes into a pocket in the factory OEM coil mount. But anyways, um, so I will be doing a lower coil mount that uh, that I that's modular um, so I can do either this style, so just a small um, piece of whatever I needed that would hold the inside of, the, of a factory um, JKU coil. I could even reuse this little retainer. Um, but then also I can swap those parts out and I can do anything I want with the lower coil. Um, as far as a universal coil, I could also shim the coil um, for height adjustment. Um, so in theory, I could run stock rear coils and just put a, a three inch shim in there. I don't think I want to do that. Um, but, uh, in general, that's one of the things that could be done with this, uh, concept is you could literally build in the lift, the suspension geometry, um, everything that you needed and be able to just roll a set of axles underneath your Jeep and bolt on a 40 inch tire. Like everything could be done with the axle bracket geometry. And I think that idea is worth investigating. I don't know, um, you know, maybe this video will get people talking about it and maybe some companies will um, listen then <laughs> um, if they start getting a whole bunch of phone calls. Like, why aren't you doing that when you're charging me, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for a set of axles? <laughs> um, I won't probably be that company. Um, you know, I, I am just a small little hobby shop type thing. I like building stuff. Um, I'll probably do, uh, the bracket set if it works out well, I think I can make a, uh, a, a retrofit bolt on fairly easy. It would still require a little bit of welding, um, you know, cutting and stuff like that. But I think I could get it pretty, um, pretty close to being something somebody could do in their uh, garage, like me, garage. And uh, that's what I'm kind of going for. So rear axle first, all the stuff, all the same stuff is going to apply to the front axle. Um, I, I don't think I'll be stretching the, the, um, the wheelbase in the front um, or, or relocating the, uh, the track bar panard mount um, stuff. But in general, I will be trying to raise all the lower all the mounts on the axle side so the lower and the upper of the axle um, about three inches um, and yeah the front axle is going to be a little bit more complicated um, we'll get into that hopefully this rear axle goes fairly quick um, i can make this like a two-parter so this will be part one part two will just be like here's how it ended up looking when it was finished with all the parts on it um, and then we'll get this one off the bench. We'll put the front up here. We'll kind of go through the front axle on the same thing and uh, do that one. Um, and then we'll get these things underneath the Jeep and bolt some big old dumb tires on there and all that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I hope that works out pretty well. I think it will. I'm looking forward to having beefy um, axles under stuff. I'm not particularly hard on parts really. Um, but, um, it is nice to have that insurance, not have to worry about stuff. So, um, thanks for following along. If you have any questions, uh, comments, discussion, debate, um, whatever else, please post a comment below. Um, you know, if you want to do that offline, you can too. You can always email me at, uh, info at brennans-garage.com. Uh, and thanks for following along and, uh, yeah, hope that was interesting. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next one.